Hi everyone, so we're going to be covering the how to approach the statement of profit and loss and statement of financial position exam question and the accounting exam of the ACA qualification. Now, uh, this is a question where you're given an initial, initial trial balance or similar data and you have to prepare a statement of financial position and a statement of profit and loss. Now, you have to post adjustments such as income tax, closing inventory, accruals, prepayments and depreciation. And this reflects partly what happens in real life because, for example, the income tax is calculated at the very last minute once the draft figures have been finalised. Closing inventory is always a year-end adjustment because uh, when you're recording a purchase of an item, you, uh, you do debit cost of sales. You put, you put, uh, you'd never put the debit to stock. You always put it to cost of sales. Accruals and prepayments, there are always mistakes in the year when, where they've over recognized, where they've over recorded the expense or under recorded the expense. So that's when you get accruals and prepayments and depreciation, uh, because they're lazy, they haven't done the depreciation charge for the year. So they're giving you extra work to do. These questions can be really fun, actually, once you get the hang of them. I don't know, I just enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing them. It was like doing a puzzle for me. So my tips are, first, number one, is to try and deal with the easy accounts first, which I'll explain in a minute. And for each adjustment, when I say easy, for each adjustment, ensure that you've adjusted both the P&L and the soft P. Uh, so remember, each adjustment has two effects. Like if you're recording a uh, an accrual, you do debit expense credit accrual. So your ex admin expenses are increasing and your accrual is increasing as well. I think for me, easy accounts are the ones where there are very few adjustments, like cash is unlikely to be adjusted because in, all, in practice it agrees to a bank, bank statement. So how could you get that wrong? Um, income tax, they'll tell you sometimes what the income tax is. So you can know what the income tax expenses and you know what the income tax payable is so you kill two birds with one stone trade receivables is, can be fairly straightforward because all you're doing is writing off it's never going to be un overstated it's never going to be understated it's always going to be overstated i think some long-term liabilities uh, aren't going to change and you can just pull them out of the uh, trial balance Closing inventory can be a straightforward one. They're going to just tell you what that is. There might be one or two adjustments to make. But remember with closing inventory, we have to adjust cost of sales, which I'll explain on the next slide. For me, the difficult ones are cost of sales, admin expenses, and PPE. They involve a lot of work, but um, you can still get quite a few marks in them, even if you get the wrong answers. Uh, retained earnings is always a balancing figure. I don't recommend you know, adding the profit for the year and taking away dividends the, and adding the, back the opening balance. I'd say just put it in at the last minute, whatever your balancing figure is, and you may or may not get the marks. It's just a gamble. But I can say that if you nail this question, you reduce your pressure for the remaining questions. So I think it's a good idea to try and get the hang of it. And it can be really fun to do. Like, it's just like doing a puzzle, really. Just remember it as a puzzle. So here are some pro formers that I think are helpful and I'd almost forgotten. I only remembered them when I was preparing this presentation and when I was actually trying to go for an exam question. So you can premeditate what's going up. So cost of sales and admin expenses, you're definitely going to have to calculate. Now, cost of sales, opening inventory, less closing inventory. Okay, so these are the minimum that you're going to need to put in. And there might be some other relevant costs like manufacturing and purchases of stock of in when I say stock, I mean inventory. Admin expenses, there can be a lot of work. It's just basically adding in all the relevant expenses, like anything to do with accruals, write off of trade receivables goes into admin expenses. So it's like the default account. And also PPE. So PPE is always the hardest one. It's the one they like to test you on the most. Now here's a plot pro forma that I think is helpful. Now the, oop, the confusing thing is, is that land isn't depreciated. So land has an indefinite use for life and you never depreciate it. So we have to sort of separate the land from the buildings. We're often told the total. 
So if my land and buildings total is 140 and this is 80, then my balancing figure is going to be 60. Okay. Now my accumulated appreciation can only hit the building, so I'm going to put the 20 here. I'm using my cursor, but I'm still writing pretty well, I have to say. And then my carrying amount is going to be the cost minus ADN. That's going to give me 40. Okay, so generally there's going to be a different depreciation rate for buildings and plant and machinery. Just apply it. And the good thing about this proforma is that if you do, a, if you're using straight line, if the depreciation is on a straight line basis, you're going to use cost. And if it's on a reducing basis, you just use this column here. Okay. Normally they don't have additions and dispose. I don't think they have additions and disposals in this type of question, but it might come up. You just have to be flexible. Okay. Remember, it's not about getting the hundred percent. It's about getting fifty-five. We can easily get more than 55 in this question if you approach it right. And we're going to have a go at it together, so don't worry. Right, that's all for me, guys. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I look forward to going through the exam question with you. Thanks. Cheers. Bye.